powerful as what the Aussies have recently offered. Tiana Tom takes us down under for an explanation. It showcases some of the most modern cities and spectacular seacoasts in the world. With a climate like California, Australia's 19 million citizens have a perfect place to live and play. They have lifeguard competitions, excel in international cricket, and of course have homegrown Aussie rules football. But Aussies also love aggressive inline skating. Over a million skaters and growing every year. And it's a sport that has been embraced by the Australians because it involves activity and it's outdoors. And Australians love outdoor activity. I've been bringing skates in since 1991-92. The market size is about 450,000 skates brought into the country every year. The market that we entered, uh, we doubled our sales from 1992 to 1996. You'll find skate parks by the sea, in the country, and even in the cities next to mainstream sports. And unlike the U.S., liability laws put the burden on the skater, not the skate park. We just have them lying around and you skate them at your own risk to enjoy yourself. And uh, if you hurt yourself, you go home, you go to the dock, you do whatever you have to do, but you don't sue the place because then you're not going to be able to go there next month because they're going to knock the place down. Now, I never really thought about it until I did go to America what, two years, three years ago, whatever it was. And we had to sign waivers to get into everywhere. And I couldn't believe it. We're like, what? What's going on here? What's going on in Australia is an explosion of young skaters embracing aggressive inline skating. Aussie in the house. We saw it last year when the Australians, led by Tom Fry, swept the vert competition. And Matt Salerno came out of nowhere to take the street. The Australian skating scene is probably the most progressive in the world. It's pure. Australian skating is pure and it's from the heart. While the top skaters have access to top equipment, the lack of native companies mean high costs back home for American skates. But new skates are old, Australian kids find a way to do the sport they love, meaning there's a new wave of stars on the way, right in keeping with the Aussie attitude. We're competitive by nature, though, so you put a challenge there, and you'll find a little group all of a sudden turn a game into a sport and a, a sport into a, into a business, I suppose. And uh, I suppose we're... We're arrogant enough to basically think that we can compete against the world. And at the X Games, they have. In different parts of the world, base their skating on different influences. In Australia, it goes back more to skateboarding. In Europe, it's gymnastics and diving. In America, it's Arlo and Chris. And the sport always stays fresh because it's not so choreographed and all these new influences keep it going. And the future may belong to the Aussies. Amazing how much fun you can have when the overriding influence in society is not liability insurance. Our inline vert competition certainly reflects a very international leaderboard. Vert finals after the first run, Aussie Tom Fry on top. The Dane, Holgren, second, Arlo and Chris stand 3-4. And the Swiss skater, Rafael Sanduz, is in fifth. Mac Dana, Jack Edwards, Paul Higgins, Camille Duvall, and a couple thousand of their closest friends. They don't have the kind of liability suits in Australia that they do in the U.S., and as a result, there are an awful lot of ramps available to the populace. Maybe that's why the Aussies have become such a world power in inline. Oh, it's time for the Viking. Rene Holgren, the flag bearer for Denmark. Second place after the first run, so he knows he's in metal position, and now he can really let it rip. Totally uninhibited by the prospect of not doing well. He knows he's supposed to the score. He's going to stand up. Judges looking for style, creativity, difficulty, and consistency. Consistency in the second run seems to be playing a big part. Nice top side goal.
look at how diverse this guy can stay. This is a top side soul. Complete control from the top side. Over the platform. And here, this is an old school trick. A fast plant to disaster and back in. When you peg a 70 plus in your first run, you can really let it rip. He's got nothing to lose as they only count the best of your three run score. With all the different tricks and terminology, it can be a little bit intimidating, but just pay attention, you're going to catch on fast. Nike presents Get a Clue. The X Game Glossary. Skating or landing, there's nothing false about a fakie. It's backwards at its best. But arch your back, grab your foot and lean way back, and it's a Gumby. Try an invert, upside down with your hand on the coping. And sliding those skates along the coping puts you in a grind. Think you've got the gist? Try a McTwist. Upside down and spinning 540 degrees. Now, you've got a clue. Well, the king is not dead. Long live the king. Tom Fry is still on top. Figuratively and most literally. He's in the lead after the first run. Nobody's been able to cut the score. Maybe he can cut it right here in the second. And right off the bat, he does a 540 and somehow miraculously ends up on the exact opposite side of the ramp. Off the escalator, one footed. He's going in technical merit that we just haven't seen from anybody else in the Now it's a switch 360. Out to the hard ball. Fry takes a beer, but he's got time left. This guy's a true professional. He's a promoter of the sport, and he's going to give the fans his 60 seconds worth. And he's doing tricks even on his way up the ramp. By the way, he's got one layer of cotton between himself and the mason. Like that had to hurt. Nice disaster to top side. You're watching the Tom Fry Show at the X Games. On the replay, a one-footed topside soul grind up the escalator, making it even more difficult. It's just it. It's good. Tom Fry's first run is the best we've seen so far. Rene Hoogren got within two-tenths of a point in his second run, but he's still in second place.